Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, we thank you for the rising of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, this day that we would celebrate with great enthusiasm the truth that he is alive. May it be this day that we would be those who are ready to go out and spread the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of you, maybe most of you know that one of my majors in college was psychology. And in the wonderful world of psychology, there is a group of experiments that fall under the heading of stimulus and response. Over the years, there have been many ideas of what the stimuli can be. One experiment that I remembered showed college-age males, and they had to look into a screen. And on the screen were very nice-looking women. And as each slide progressed, there was a certain amount of revelation, if you will. And it showed, as things changed, the pupils of these college-age men just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Other stimulus ones dealt with electric shock and the willingness of people <coughs> to continue to turn up the volume of the amount of shock given over to these people. Now most of you are familiar with the Gospel of John's coverage of the resurrection, but today we're going to look at how Mark deals with it. Now, what struck me about this passage is the description of the various emotions that are recorded here. So we want to look at this as they are living their lives on this first day of the week, Sunday. Exactly what was going to be happening as these three women came to put spices on the body of Jesus. Now as they approached, they were faced with a sense of bewilderment. How were they going to roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Now I have to digress here, because I, I, I just had this story come to mind. In my first church, we were in a farming community, not very unsimilar to here. And I had one guy who was a state trooper. And his statement to me one day was, it cost me about a thousand dollars a year to sell people that I'm a farmer. Because he was on that lovely <coughs> margin where it was <coughs> marginal. I'm making profit. He was a hay farmer. Well, one day, he didn't have the equipment, so he would always hire in somebody to bail for him. Well, he had a son, Steve, about 19, 20 years of age, and he gave instructions before he went on to his um, shift at the police barracks. He said, Steve, what I want you to do is once they bail, I want you to roll the bales onto one side of the field so they'll be all in a row so they can be ready to be put on the truck. Steve, being a very good, obedient son, said, okay, Dad, I'll do that. <laughs> well, what happened was the situation came that there was a communications difficulty with the guy who was called to bail. The previous year, he had come and brought his round baler that produced a bale of around 300 pounds. So the father said 300 pounds for a 20-year-old strong, snapping young man. He could easily bring it over. Well, the man 
now got a brand new piece of equipment that produced a 900 pound bale of straw or bay. Steve worked for over three hours and got three of them in a row. And he just gave up. Well, you can imagine as these three women come to the tomb, who is going to roll away the stone? Archaeological digs within the Middle East have shown that these stones are similar to what we used to have of millstones, but they didn't have the hole in the middle. And they would go anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds. So it was a large task to move these stones. So it was probably their reaction to this of bewilderment. How am I going to do it? Some of you this morning may be facing stones in your own lives. They may not be a physical stone, but it may be a bodily ailment that is constantly there to keep you from living the life that you feel God has called you to live. It may be a financial stone that lays in front of you and your family. Possibly it could be a balloon payment that seems so far away when you took out the mortgage, but now is sitting on the horizon. Or maybe the company that you work for is downsizing and your job is right in the crosshairs. Large stones come in various forms in our lives, but they are there. But praise be to God, when the women came to the tomb, it had been rolled away. So likewise, God is able to roll away the stones within our lives. Now the women entered in and find a man with white clothes, and it is noted that they are alarmed. Now that's the way the New Revised Standard Version translated the word itself from the original language can also have a sense of amazement. I think the two different translations can go hand in hand. Indeed, some of the things that are amazing can be frightening to us. I know from time to time on the news you'll get there and watch the accidents from NASCAR. I'm amazed at the carnage of these autos flipping through the air, turning time and time again. <clears throat> but at the same time, I'm fearful of the danger that these accidents present. These women came expecting to apply spices to a body, something that probably they had done several times as Funeral homes were not yet invented, and it fell to the family and friends to apply the spices to the body so that they would not stink. And now they are confronted with a man in white clothing. Other gospel writers identify it as a, an angel. But the opening words from this man comes that they are not to be alarmed because they seek Jesus. He has been raised and he is not here. Now I have to go a little bit on this. Some may say that I am splitting hairs, but it is very important that Jesus was raised because it carries with it the understanding that there was a force outside of Jesus. Jesus didn't say, oh, it's morning, I'm going to get up and walk out. He was raised. God took a body that was fully dead, because if Jesus was not fully dead, he did not fully die, and our sins are still remaining with us. Jesus was raised from the dead, and he's not there. 
Now the young man continues on to tell the more early morning visitors to go and tell the disciples and Peter to go to Galilee and that he is ahead of them and he will meet you there. In 1428, Jesus tells his disciples, that's Mark 14, 28, Jesus tells the disciples and Peter in particular that he would go ahead of them to Galilee. Now you have to understand a little bit about what was going on. Do you remember that Peter denied Jesus? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus did <laughs> deny him. And what's important to see is he's telling, tell the disciples and Peter to make sure that Peter knew that he was included too. The sweetest sound that you ever hear is your name spoken by a loved one. Do you agree with that? The sweet, amen, amen. thank you. <laughs> the sweetest sound that you will ever hear is your name spoken by a loved one. And here it is that Peter has denied Jesus. He ran away and stood off away from it because he did not want to be associated with it. But now Jesus is saying, tell my disciples and Peter. It's important for Peter to know that he is included. I love the hymn Jesus calls us. Jesus calls you and calls me by our name. Come to me. The women, their response from all of this message from the messenger, it says in the scriptures that they were filled with fear and amazement as they fled from the tomb. That was their response. Do you remember what it said? What was their reaction? What did they do? Did they go and tell the disciples? No. They did. They, they were afraid, and so they didn't tell anyone. Many of us wonder, how could that possibly be? You have now been brought forth the news that Jesus has been raised from the dead. He's no longer there. I've got to tell somebody. I mean, if I, if I was in that situation, I would want to tell. But they were afraid. Now, how many of you have told somebody else lately? Not just way back there. How many of you have told people about that Jesus is alive? Now, in the earliest manuscripts, it stopped at verse 8. But later, there would come the news about who got to see Jesus. And they had to add on to the Gospel of Mark. And the text concludes with Jesus meeting up with his disciples and berating them for their unwillingness to believe. If you notice those people who had the reports that it was, and they did not believe, and they did not believe. And so Jesus is saying, why didn't you believe? Go into the world, he says, and proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any 